hey guys welcome you all in t3p in this week we will talk about the questions related to aw certified cloud practitioner exam and in this video we will go through the new questions with their explanation also i'll cover a few concepts there and i'll share uh, you can use this video as a cheat sheet and i'll share the tricks how you can identify the correct answer inside the video so without wasting time let's start so guys uh, let's understand first what we are covering in this video in this video we are not only covering the questions but also we are covering these many services while going through the questions i'll explain each and every services in short so it will help you to remember while you go through the exam or while you're preparing or it will help you uh, while answering during the questions or discussing any with your stakeholders so we'll talk about the same responsibility model what is the responsibility of you and what is the responsibility of cloud service provider then i'll talk about what is the difference between monolithic and microservices like monolithic is also known as tightly coupled application and microservices application known as loose coupled application then I'll talk about the vertical and horizontal scaling. Then we'll go through the core services like EBS snapshots. Availability zone is from the AWS architecture. Then we'll talk about the EFS file system that's like similar to the file server or file system we can, uh, in cloud. Then we are having root 53 that is DNS service. Uh, then we will talk about containerization what exactly the containerization which is actually converting our application in the form of container with the help of container runtime like your docker we are having and we are having other like CRT as well. Then we will talk about the golden image, then we will go through further about AWS Ops work service, which is mainly used for workflow automation. Then we will talk about the bootstrapping, Amazon Cognito service, which is mainly used for sign-in and sign-up for our mobile application. Then we will talk about the AWS Seal service, which helps us to protect from DDoS attacks. Then we will talk about AWS Firewall Manager. It's not File Manager, it's a Firewall Manager. Okay, next we will talk about AWS Organizations what exactly this service is then we'll talk about aws trusted advisor service how it helps us to give the best recommendations to follow the best practices which is offered by aws then we'll talk about the aws cloud trail service which is mainly used for uh, capturing the logs of api actions and then we will talk about amazon cloud Watch service that help us to collect the metrics which help us for billing alarm and other services other actions next in the last we'll talk about Amazon quick site service which is actually a business intelligence service known as a bi service in general so these many services we will cover while we will go through the question so it will help you to remember for longer period of time so guys uh, let's talk about this question in this question they are asking as per aws shared responsibility model what are the customers responsibility we need to identify two options correct out of these five options so first option they are talking about physical and environmental security next is physical network devices including firewalls switches and other things third option is about storage device decommissioning third, fourth option security of data in transit Last option we are having data integrity authentication. See, uh, whenever we talk about the shared responsibility model, either it is in AWS or other cloud providers. So we need to keep two things in mind. One is who is taking care of the whole cloud, means the infrastructure which is created there, and who is need to take care about inside the cloud. Okay, so there are two things of the cloud, inside the cloud. So whenever there are there are terms or the situation given of the cloud like uh, who will take care of the security of the physical location of data centers of regions or the digital devices these all comes under cloud service providers responsibility not from the customer side so if you go through the options physical and environmental security it's a service uh, cloud service providers responsibility so here it is aws responsibility next is physical network devices including firewall that is also physical devices any device which is physically present in the cloud it's a cloud provider's responsibility so it is not also correct choice here a storage device decommissioning uh, storage device is like a physical device and uh, they want to decommission it so it's not um, belongs to us so we are um, we no need to take care of it so it's also clouds cloud service providers responsibility next is security of data in cloud or uh, in tangent see whatever is related to data you as a customer it's your responsibility to take care of that one so here this will comes your responsibility so this is correct choice here next is data integrity authentication so this is also your responsibility whenever we talk about the physical locations security or take care of this thing uh, related to physical device everything belongs to them so they are taking care of that one we just need to take care what we are going to use there so data is related to us that's why it's our responsibility so here our uh, answer will be security of data in transit next is data integrity authentication so this belongs to us now we will talk about next question in this question they are asking which of the following is a principle of good aws cloud architecture design so the thing is it's a you know, we can say this question can help you to understand for your solution architect level exam as well but it's a basic question so we can consider this question into our cloud practitioner so the option we are having first implement single point of failure i think this is not correct because we always try to avoid single point of failure whenever we design or plan anything so this is not correct implement loose coupling see loose coupling is something microservices or right now we are using app modernization where we are using the microservices what exactly it is here the application is divided or we can say 
separated in different component and these components are attached with loosely these are loosely coupled okay so what is the advantage of this one if you see nowadays any application you are using either it is netflix youtube or prime video hotstar whatever you are using right now these all the applications running based on microservices so the thing is here the application where the data is there the front end back end and the other middleware component these are loosely coupled whenever there is maintenance they just take care of that particular component and also it will be maintained in that way or upgraded in that way that still it will not give you the downtime for that one so this is the advantage so this is the correct choice for this monolithic design is like traditional design we are having where we are having all the components tightly coupled means whenever there is a downtime or the maintenance for any of the components we need to shut down whole application and we need to prepare make it ready fully then only we can make it live so like our banking systems most of the time we can see that uh, they go for the maintenance right so they can afford that then so they do it uh, non working hours that maintenance so that the type of system which is traditionally which is uh, so that is known as monolithic design so this is not correct here last option we are having implement vertical scaling as you know we are having two types of scaling vertical scaling comes under like on a single machine you are increasing the resources like if you're talking about the cpu if you are having two cpu you are increasing or decreasing it's called a vertical scaling this is next we are having horizontal scaling where we are putting another instance same type of instance all together either we increase it or decrease so we always prefer to go with the horizontal scaling the reason if we here we are having single point of failure if something happened wrong with this machine either it is 16 gb rom or 100 gb of ram it doesn't matter it will go down when we are having two machines if one goes down second will always be up right so that's why it's not uh, the good architecture we can say so that's why this is also wrong so we will go with the implement loose coupling here let's see the next question now so let's talk about this question in this question they are asking which of the following is a method of backup available in the aws cloud so we are looking for a method where we can keep our backup so the option we are having amazon evs snapshots next option we are having available availability zones uh, third one amazon efs file systems uh, fourth one is amazon root 53 so before giving it the right answer let's understand what exactly these services are so first we are having amazon evs snapshot evs stands for elastic block storage so it's a block based storage system that provides a virtual hard disk inside the cloud if i'll talk about the availability zone availability zone is a kind of a logical location inside the region where the availability zone consists of one or more physical data centers like our organization's office we are having right next we are having amazon efs file system that provides file based storage service which we can access through the nfs protocol as far as i know we can use it uh, as a storage service but not as a backup service so it's not correct amazon root 53 it's a dns service in aws so here we are not talking about the mapping of name to ip address or ip address to name so we can't use it so this is also wrong availability zone yes it is used for high availability and fault alerts but not for the, as a backup service but e amazon ebs snapshot we can use it as a backup service because it's provide virtual hard disk in the cloud so our choice for this question will be amazon ebs snapshot let's talk about next question now what is the term for describing action of automatically running scripts on amazon ec2 instances when launched to install software so the option we are having containerization golden images that through automation bootstrapping so let's understand one by one if i talk about the containerization it's a process where we convert our application in the form of containers then we can launch it through the we can create these containers through docker container uh, docker or other container runtime like crt and we are having others containerization platform or we can save the tools next we are having golden images uh, golden images are the snapshots of any pre-configured evs volume that can be launched to launch new instances if i talk about the workflow automation it is a, it's actually a process or we can say the orchestrating automated access so this is associated with service such as sap or if you heard about it or in aws it is known as aws ops work so that is known as a workflow automation bootstrapping yes bootstrapping is the execution of automated access to the service like uh, ec2 or any rds we are having so the thing is uh, here they are asking describing the action of automatically running a script on amazon ec2 instance when launched to install software so here our choice will be bootstrapping because we are not looking for containerization we are not looking for the stuff sorts we are not looking for any workflow automation like uh, aw ops work to do so here we are looking the service which can help us to automatically run our script when any instance is launched so here we will go with bootstrapping let's talk about next question now let's talk about this question in this question they are asking which aws service or feature helps restrict the aws service resources and individual api access the user and roles in each member account can access so the option we are having amazon cognito aws seal aws firewall manager aws organization so let's understand one by one first we talk about the amazon cognito uh, actually this service is used for providing your sign up sign in and sign up services for your mobile application 
Next, we are having AWS Seal Service. That is the service which is security service for protecting against the DDoS attacks like we are having or uh, distributed denial of service attacks we are having on our web application or any resource. So it will stop responding to actual user's response or uh, requests. So the thing is, it is used to protect DDoS attacks. Next service we are having AWS Firewall Manager. That is the service which is used for managing various security services in AWS. And the last service we are having AWS organizations. AWS organizations actually help us to centrally manage and govern our environment as we grow and scale our AWS resources. It uses uh, pro it uses programmatically. We can create new AWS accounts and allocate resources group accounts to organize our workflow. So there are many advantages, or we can say the benefits of using AWS organizations. Actually, it helps us quickly scale our environment. Applies policies that give our teams the freedom to build with the resources they need. There are other benefits as well. So here we are looking for the service which can help us to restrict the AWS service resources and individual API access. So that I can see only can be done by AWS organization. If we will talk, as we discussed, Cognito is only for providing some sign-in sign-up services for mobile applications. So it's not correct. It is used AWS services for uh, protecting from DDoS attacks. So it is not looking in the question. And the firewall manager is for the managing security related services in um, AWS. So our answer will be AWS organizations for this question. Let's talk about next question now. Let's talk about this question. In this question they're asking which AWS service should be used to create a billing alarm. That is very important because every cloud provider asks this question in their foundation exam. So this is one of the important questions. So let's understand the options we are having AWS Trusted Advisor, AWS Cloud Trail, AWS Cloud Watch, Amazon, QuickSight. So if we talk about the AWS Trusted Advisor, it's an online tool that provides us real-time guidance how we can help uh, our infrastructure or how we can provision our resources with the following best practices which is provided by AWS. So it's an advisor service. Next service we are having AWS Cloud Trail. AWS Cloud Trail actually locks the API's activity whatever actions need to be done. Um, whatever access taken by API it records or we can see the logs to activities um, and uh, we can't use it for any performance or billing metrics. Next service we are having Amazon CloudWatch. Amazon CloudWatch is actually a monitoring and uh, observability service which provides us the data and actionable insights to monitor our application. Also, it collects monitoring and operational data in the form of logs, metrics, and events. So the thing is, this service can be used for billing purpose. The last service we are having, Amazon QuickSight. Amazon QuickSight is actually a cloud-powered BI service, business intelligence service, we can say, that make it makes easy to deliver insights to everyone in our organization. So it's mainly for representation purpose. So it's not correct. If I talk about the advisor service tested, that is also not correct. Cloud Trail is not correct because it just logs the API's activities. So it's not correct. CloudWatch is the correct service which can create a billing alarm because it monitors and uh, collects the metrics which help us to generate the billing and it will send the alarm to us. So this is correct choice for this question. Let's see what we have next. Hey guys, that's it in this video. I hope you find this video helpful. If you find it, then don't forget to click on like button, mention in the comment box if you need more questions related to this exam and share with your friends if they are preparing for AWS because this video will help them to start their journey in AWS. Don't forget to subscribe this channel for more content related to cloud certification. So see you next video and connect with me on Telegram.